Okay, locks on people. If you want to know how to deliver smart home projects, like the full installation from start to finish, then I wanna get into and show you a 10 step framework where you can deliver projects similar to this that you can see on the screen now, taking it all the way from a blank canvas of a panel all the way through to a fully tested, commissioning, programmed and working system with a happy client. So let's jump into it. Okay, so this is how to deliver a smart home installation. So project delivery, my 10 step framework, what I do on this real world locks on project. So the first thing is to work backwards. Understand what subsystems need controlling and if you can, think about the level of functionality that you want from those subsystems. So when I talk about subsystems, what I mean is lighting, heating, security, ventilation, access, audio, all of these things, they're subsystems. And then what level of functionality do you want from them? And I'm not, I'm not talking about, you know, the details of going into the programming, like external lights coming on at door, uh, dusk and then going off at midnight, like not that level of functionality, but you know, what do you want the lighting to be able to do? You know, do you want to be able to switch the lights on in the hallway, just on and off? Or do you want them to be dimmed up and down? You know, these kind of things. So that's the first thing. Think about the end. Think about the end in to start with. What do you want at the end? And then you kind of work back from there. And then the second thing is then to translate all of that functionality all of the control of those subsystems and how you're gonna do that into hardware and products. So that might be hardware and products out in the field, if you wanna use that terminology. So peripherals in the home. So like light switches, down lights, motion sensors, valve actuators, those things out in the field but also what hardware and products are being used and are needed for this level of functionality within the control panel. You know, whether you've got one master panel or maybe you've got two or three sub panels distributed across different floors. Okay, and then the third thing is to calculate what all of this costs. So adding up all the parts that you've just worked out that's needed to achieve that level of functionality. So all of those, you know, out in the field, the peripherals, as mentioned, like the switches, the motion sensors, etc., all the hardware in the panel, and you, you can't forget consumable things that are easy to forget. So cable, you know, cable infrastructure, little things that go into the control panel, like terminal blocks, cable in the panels themselves. So all of these costs for, for hardware, for parts, you need to work those out. Then the second thing is your labor, your time. So not if you're doing the installation, not only the time to do the installation, there's lots of other time costs that you need to factor in. Traveling to site, for example, doing design work, doing admin work, doing consultation back and forth with tech support to work out if you can integrate this subsystem with the control system and all these little things. Programming, on-site commissioning, like there's all of these labor times that you need to think about that are easily overlooked, especially if you've not really done this before. So that's the next thing to factor into these costs is your time. Also expenses, so things like fuel, traveling to and from site, if you're staying away, hotel costs, food costs, all of these things that if they're not factored in, yeah, and it ends up being that the, the project isn't profitable and, you know, you, you either lose money or you don't make any money. And, you know, what's the point of being in business if, if that's the case? Uh, and then the final thing is profit margin. So again, just tying into that point of being in business, businesses aren't in business to go out of business and to stay in business, you need to factor in a profit margin, whatever that is, you know, depending on the size of the business, type of business you're running, you know, what you think is fair. But yeah, we, we can't stay in business. We can't grow we can't support customers into the future and provide good service to customers if we're not adding in profit margin. So please don't forget that. On to the fourth thing, and that is submitting a final proposal. So at this stage, you should have a good understanding of what everything is gonna cost, what your expenses are gonna be, um, the time that you factored in, everything, profit margin as well, 
and you're ready now to put that all together into a nice proposal and contract. And there's likely in stages two, three, and even four, there's likely to be back and forth with the client, um, just ironing out details, maybe agreeing on payment plans, payment terms, contractual things, there's gonna be back and forth. So this, this step four covers all of that. Now, once you've got the green light on the project, and you're ready to start progressing with it. Happy days, well done. This is where it gets exciting. So this fifth stage is where you focus on the design and the documentation. And before you start this phase, I would be invoicing the client for around 20%. So the first 20% of the overall project cost, I would be invoicing at this point. And the percentages might change slightly depending on you know your preferences, what the client's happy with, but this is typically what I charge um, before we start doing the design phase. And also ordering first fix materials like cables mostly. But yeah, this is where the design and the documentation really starts. You might have already done some initial design and planning work to understand that um, the initial controls going in. So you're picking up really from, from where you left off there and now you're making it much more professional and more detailed. Now, just before we move on to the sixth step, I don't focus on installation work. I sub out installation work or I partner up with the client or main contractor's electrician and support them. So I don't do installation work, but as mentioned, I've ordered the first fix hardware like cables so they would have already been sent to site. And once the designs have at least started um, and I can pass over the initial cable schedules, the electricians, the contractors on site can start doing the install. So when we get to step six, and this is where I would be going on site to do my on site checks before the walls and the ceilings and whatnot, and all of that gets closed up before it gets finalized just to check that the cable infrastructure matches my designs. You know, it's just worth it. It's just worth factoring this into your initial proposal. Yeah, because it's just gonna save so much aggro in the long term. And we can iron out all those final little details, those little problems that might have been missed. And just like, I can just tick off everything on my cable schedule and make sure I'm happy. The installation guys, they're happy, the client's happy, and then it just gives us all that confidence moving forward into the next phase. Okay, on to the seventh step now, and this is where we're gonna be ordering all the second fix items and panel hardware. So things like, I mentioned, devices out in the field, so light fittings, switches, motion sensors, valve actuators, CO2 monitors, all, all of these things that are technically second fix items, they would be ordered. And also all the hardware for the panels. So panel enclosures, PLC modules, terminal blocks, cable, RCBOs, etc., etc. all of that, that's ordered at this point. And as you can imagine, this is quite a hefty part of the project cost. So at this point, again, percentage might change slightly, but at this point, I'll be invoicing around 60%, depend, depending on you know the, the cost of all the hardware. Now, depending on the project, I may keep the second fix items with me in storage and then go and do the commissioning with all the second fix items when I get to site and actually start the commissioning. Or I might choose, depending on how competent the installation team is and also how good I am at supporting them and if I'm able to support them, you know, remotely or even on site, it might be at this point that I send all the field equipment the peripheral devices to site for the ins the second fix installation and, and offline commissioning to, to start. But all the control panel stuff that will stay with me off site, very important to stay off site, ready for step six. And this is where we're gonna start the control panel build off site, okay? And a lot of people that I spoke to, they, they end up doing this on site. It's just not worth it. Because what happens on site is it's just, it's just so difficult to stay focused and when you're wiring panels and there's all these on-site distractions and you know you get distracted you forget where you are you make loads of wiring problems that you then have to fault find later on things like dust and dirt getting into the electronics of the panel just people moving about damaging things it's just do not do it please just build your control panels off-site even if you haven't got a 
workshop or a garage, just build it in your living room, build it in your kitchen. It's, it's trust me, it's worth it. And then you can do all the um, pre-commissioned testing off-site as well uh, and get it pre-programmed as well off-site, again, without all these distractions and potential problems on site. So when it's ready, it can be delivered to site. And again, maybe you're just keeping this and you're delivering it to site at the same time as you start the, the on-site commissioning, or maybe you're sending it to site in advance so the installation team can get it mounted. I would probably recommend doing that. Send it to site, get it all packed up and nicely packaged so it doesn't get damaged and then get it sent to site for wall mounting. But again, it depends on the competency of the installation guys and if you've worked with them before and yeah, if they're if they're any good. But if they if you if you don't know their ability, you haven't worked with them before, very important, do not allow the install team to do the terminations to the panel. Well, I'll show you, I'll show you. Let me show you why. So first of all, this is disgraceful. Any electrician should know that there should be grommet strip around here. This was installed by a you know a qualified electrician that's been in the game a very long time. So, you know, that's unacceptable, but there's these other things that you, you might be able to let them off, but um, this certainly not unacceptable. Um, yeah, complete mess when it comes to actually dressing in the cables, like they're, they're just chucking them in. You spend hours and hours building a really nice tidy panel and then the final t terminations are just slung in. It's it's hard to see when you get on site and then it's all done wrong anyway. And then there's, there's yeah, look at it, the more. So yeah, not too good. But then you see things like this where they're, they're butchering the cables. I know I'm being quite harsh here. And if it was the first time they ever did this, then, you know, you, you might be a little bit more forgiving, but I'm just telling you, anyone that's watching this, unless the contractor's done it before, just don't let them do it because things like this will happen. And then you have to do loads of fault finding anyway. Not, not only redressing in all the cables and making them safe, because the problem with this is if there's nicks in the cable, they're, they're like intermittently shorting out, nicks on this cable, nicks on this cable, or whatever and they're intermittently shorting out. This is causing problems in the field, which are really difficult to diagnose and fault find when it's it's something stupid like this. And these are really difficult to, to identify, you know, because you might be looking at it from an angle where you're not seeing that nick. So yeah, you can just imagine how this all this can all stack up in terms of fault finding more time on site and just look, there's another great example. This is a comms cable. Actually, it's got all sorts in here, power and comms, but these cores are comms, the locks on tree comms. And you can see down to the copper there on the positive, there's a nick out of it here on the negative. So those can easily just be shorting out and just intermittently wiping out the whole tree bus. And you're like, well, where the hell is this coming from? And you're, I'm gonna stop talking because it's just, it's an absolute nightmare, trust me. There we go. Yeah, so pretty, pretty awful, pretty butchered. Hopefully you get my point in that on that one. So yeah, moving on, get a bit passionate about these sort of things. So the next thing, this is is where once everything's on site, all the cabling is done, maybe second fix has been done, and now you're coming on site to do those terminations that I just talked about, dressing in the, the, the field cables into the panels, nice and neatly, making sure it's all done correctly, you know, to the right regulations, using grommet strip, you know, not but butchering the cables. And yeah, this is where you really start the, the on-site commissioning. Maybe you're doing second fix of the field equipment as well. Maybe not, but yeah, I would factor in, depends, depends on the size of the project, uh, depends on if people have messed things up, depends how much fault finding you need to do, um, depends how much programming, how much custom detailed programming the client wants. So again, it's hard to gauge, but roughly about three days on site for the on-site commissioning and also initial client handover. And at this stage, I'll be charging roughly about 10% of the uh, of the project cost. Now we're pretty much there. The final thing, and this is really, really important, if you wanna provide a really good service and make sure that the client's happy, is a final on-site optimi optimization visit, I would say one to two months after this initial handover. And it might be that in this time, uh, between step nine, your final on-site commissioning, and then the, sorry, the final optimization visit, you might be doing a few things remotely just to fine tune things, you know, for the client if they need little details ironed out. You, you should be able to dial in remotely and do these things. But like a proper final on-site optimization visit, maybe you ask the client to write down a list of like major things 
things, big things that you really need to be on site for, write that for them to write them down ready for this visit. Because the client needs to get used to living in the home, like how how they live in the home is going to reflect how the system is programmed. So as I as I mentioned here, basically this visit is to fine tune things and then reprogram things for the client, add additional things. Sometimes there's delays um, on this specific project that I'm thinking about. There was massive delays getting the automated access and gates installed. So um, that took a lot longer to get sorted. But yeah, ultimately you get my point. And then at this stage, this is once everything's happy, client's happy, then you can invoice for the final remaining 10%. And just before you go, let me show you some photos and images of the of the panel and the project so this was the main panel that was bottom cable entry and this was up on the first floor um, so yeah main panel there and this is the second panel and this was on the ground floor in the garage um like the secondary sub sub panel if you like and most of this was doing hvac control and then external lighting external heaters and access control also with some energy monitoring as well and then as you can see here this was the project lovely not the not the biggest of projects but a lovely lovely property uh it was a three bed new build and yeah fully automated blocks on system absolutely everything and a fantastic client to work for is some more photos yeah really really enjoyable project and here's here's one of the kitchen once it's finished with blocks on lighting blocks on audio here yeah very nice project anyway that's it hope you enjoyed it subscribe like see you later